Hello, my friends. A very good morning or good evening for you there in Brazil. We are here in Africa. And I'm five hours ahead of you. So for you, it's a good evening. And for me, it's a good morning. Well, what matters is what is written in the Word of God. And last week, we started talking about the family. And I would like to continue talking about this subject because this is fundamental in the life of every human being. Without the family, without marriage, when we speak of family, it's not about the wife or the husband, nor the children. It's the wife and the husband. From that moment, the family is established. A family, in biblical terms, in spiritual terms, intelligent terms of wisdom, a family is established through marriage, the union the marriage of two human beings, husband and wife. This is so important, so important, that it was the first institution, the first sacred institution created by God here on earth. He made heavens and earth, the seas, the flowers, the fruits, the animals, everything, everything. But when it came to making men, he, he said, it's not good that man shall be alone, and I will make him a suitable helper, a helper, a, a provider, in other words, someone who will complete him, because without the woman, a man is nothing. He has only one leg. He's only half of a body. That is the truth. So, God made a suitable helper, not a female, to give birth to children only. But above all, in order to help men, to help, and the term help or auxiliary that God provided for Adam is the same term when Jesus said, I'm going to the Father, but I won't leave you orphans. I will send another helper, another auxiliary, a helper, the Holy Spirit, meaning in the same way that God created man and soon after made him a helper, God, through the Lord Jesus, came to this world, completed the work of salvation, and sent for those who fear God a helper, a helper, an auxiliary, that will complete human beings that were saved, those who are saved, those who are God-fearing. So, when we surrender our lives to Jesus, when we give our hearts and we let Him reign inside of us, and we let Him be the King inside of our hearts, then He, God, sends another Counselor, a comforter that completes us, let's say this way. It's like Jesus said, Father, in his prayer, he said, Father, I want them to have my full joy. And the Holy Spirit is the full joy of Jesus inside human beings, not only for men, but for women as well, for everyone who truly fears God. And from from the creation of man and out of man woman was created a helper then the family was created the most holy institution on earth the holiest institution even holier than the church 
because without marriage, without marriage, without the union, without a complete life, there is no church. In the same way, if the person does not have the Holy Spirit, they cannot remain in the faith. So it's written that those who do not have the Holy Spirit, they are not of God, they are not of Jesus. You can read this there in Romans 8 verse 9. So, I would like you to know of the holiness, of the importance, of the glory and majesty, of the perfection of the work of God when He made a woman as a helper for men. A helper for men. So, you who are a woman, you are created to help men. But not to help as a maid. No, not at all. It's a helper as the Holy Spirit does to us. He inspires me, He guides me, He leads us into all truth. He, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of a helper. He is the one who helps, who completes the true Christian. Without Him, it's impossible for the person to be a true Christian. In reality, it's impossible. He is the breath of life of a Christian. He is the, the main, he is the most important thing in the life of a Christian. Because if you believe in the Word of God, but you don't have the Spirit of God, then you base your life on the letter. What is written, then you simply believe in it, and that's all. But when you have the Holy Spirit, then the letter becomes life to you. It enlightens your thoughts, your eyes. So that's why the Holy Spirit is so needed. And also the need of the woman in the life of a man. And I will tell you something with all honesty and sincerity. I could not do anything in this world. There would be no universal church if I didn't have Esther by my side. If I didn't have her, I wouldn't be able to do anything because she is my, my support. She helps me. She is my helper. She doesn't need to do anything. But just by being by my side, I have support. I feel much stronger before the tribulations and struggles that we went through. I, I had her arms to comfort me, to console me and to give me strength and motivate me to move forward. So when God made man, when He made Adam, He made out of Adam a woman to help him and then complete then Adam because he was alone. And that's why God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Very nice. In the same way, it's not good for a Christian not to have the Holy Spirit, that he is not sealed with the Holy Spirit. After all, Jesus said, I've sent my Spirit to guide you into all truth. So if the person does not have the Holy Spirit, they will be confused, they will be doubtful, they won't have firmness in what they do, and, and consequently, they won't have conditions to move forward. That's why, my friend, the seal, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the complementation of the true Christian. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, then they will sink. That's the reality. But the person says, oh, I want the Holy Spirit. Well, if you want the Holy Spirit, my friend, then you have to surrender. For example, when God made Adam, He was, after He, he was about to create Eve, He made Adam fall into a deep sleep. So Adam was 
totally surrendered when the person is under anesthesia so they are surrendered to the surgeon isn't it and the surgeon will do whatever needs to be done so in the same way he had to numb he had to numb literally all the senses of Adam so that he could take a rib from him and out of him he could make Eve. So in the same way, in order for us to receive the Holy Spirit, we have to numb our hearts, we have to numb our desires, we have to numb our lusts, we have to numb, let's say, our dreams, our personal dreams. That's exactly what it is. We have to numb our hearts in order for the Holy Spirit to be able to come and reign inside of our hearts. This is very nice. God bless you. Tomorrow we are going to talk about this a bit more because it's very, very nice when you have understanding of the Word of God and you are able to make decisions. You determine, no, from now on I will obey this Word and that's it. I will not give myself rest until I receive the Holy Spirit. Then do that and, and you will be surprised by God. May God bless you and see you tomorrow. By the way, let me tell you something. If you have a problem in your love life, Thursday, every Thursday, in all the universal churches of the Kingdom of God, we have the love therapy, the therapy for marriage, the therapy that comes to meet the needs of all those who are having trouble in their marriage, which is perhaps the worst thing there is on earth. May God bless you and I see you tomorrow in Jesus' name.